out on my porch and it is, I think it's uh, like 10th or 11th of October and it's a beautiful day today. And I have been working all weekend and I feel quite exhausted. And I just decided that today I am going to sit here out on the porch and catch up with Robin and see if I can see what he's doing. Because uh, yeah, there has been a rainy uh, period here in Sweden and I haven't really spent much time out here on the porch. Uh, I have tried to remember to feed the birds, uh, but uh, yeah. I, I was looking forward to stay, sit out here on the porch and to see what he's doing and if he's still here and I know I have a lot of new birds coming. So I decided that I want to sit out here and spin today and something exciting, that was Agnes taking her place. Something exciting that my friend Emma from Garnbyron has uh, released. We have been talking about this and she's not really a sock knitter, but I have been uh, encouraging her to make some sock kits, fiber, fiber kits, fiber related sock kits. And the other day she came with this lovely little kit for me. And it is uh, blue face Lester and nylon, and it's sparkling nylon, so it's not, uh, yeah, it's, it's sort of glit glitter sparkling. And also one contrasting color. So I will spin this uh, with short forward draw, and I will spin it uh, really thin so I can make a chain ply. And also this uh, contrasting color for the cuffs, heels and toes. And to spin it like this, it will be really fun to see how I can uh, make this fiber last. And since I am chain plying it, I will just spin. First I will spin all the white and then I will continue to spin this green. And it's beautiful variegated green fiber. Really, really beautiful. So it will be nice and I will do so while sitting out here today and Hopefully I will catch up with Robin and Agnes will stay out here with me and also Nemo is out there. Uh, they got uh, a little bacon pin stick so they have something to do for a while. So yeah, let's get started with this uh, spinning. So the first thing I do of course is to open up the braid. So here's the white one and I will open it up. So this is not dyed at all. This is uh, like it comes from when she buys uh, the fibers. So she just put aside uh, 20 grams of undone dyed fibers to make the contrasting heels, toes and cuffs. And then the green is dyed like this in variegated beautiful green and yellow shades and it will be really really nice so here's someone eating but it's not uh, it's not Robin it's uh, uh, I'm not sure we shall see if I can perhaps film the the feeding table for you uh, during the day but yeah I think I since I'm quite excited now in the morning and I'm get, I'm really eager to get started. I will start with the boring part and it's it's the white one. And I think I will uh, I will just tear it apart in four pieces perhaps just to make it a little bit easier to to draft. And of course, wearing a black dress, it will be perfectly filled with all the fibers during the day. But never mind, that doesn't matter. Yeah. I brought out an uh, empty bobbin and I will be spinning it on my Maya Craft Pioneer. And uh, yeah. I'm hoping to have a lovely day out here today. It's been a while since I sat down and spun actually, so I have been missing it a little bit. Life has been a little bit busy and I haven't really gotten the time to sit down and do some spinning. But I'm looking forward to it now. Shh. 
I think it's easier when you, when you split the fibers in long thin stripes like this, it's easier to spin uh, thinner because you're not tempted to take in a lot of fibers at one time. So I am spinning short forward with my hands as you can see and I'm also putting on quite uh, high uh, gear on, on the wheel so I will get a lot of twist also on it. And that's uh, important when you are doing the chain plying because uh, if, if you are spinning with a low twist when you chain ply it's really easy that the, the thread will break. So I will try to, to uh, put high twist on this this one and for my Swedish viewers I am not doing this twice in Swedish as well so I hope that you can understand my my really simple and easy English so it's it's not really about what I'm saying it's more about watching me sit out here in the beautiful autumn day and do some spinning and uh, yeah trying to film the dogs oi Nemo got a little touch on the nose. So uh, sitting out here and uh, yeah, just uh, joining me for some spinning with the dogs and the birds and out on the porch on a beautiful autumn day here in August in Sweden. Really nice. So this was a great idea I thought to uh, to make a small kit with contrasting heels, toes and cuffs and that way we can, because m most of the times we perhaps have small leftovers from our hand spun and perhaps it's not the same fibers with the nylon as, uh, as in the new fibers that we perhaps are buying. So getting it like this and you spin it at the same time you will get it the same, uh, same thickness hopefully. <laughs> And uh, yeah, I think it's it's a great idea to do small kits like this. And she's just, it's the first time, so she's trying it out with, uh, with uh, these small kits. So uh, the contrasting colors comes in 20 grams and uh, the, main, uh, the main fiber, the main color for the, for the foot of the sock is uh, 100 grams. So uh, I, I remember knitting uh, a pair, my latest hand spun socks that I spun uh, also plied with chain ply. I, uh, I used up 115 grams for the full sock and there was no contrasting uh, fibers. So uh, I think that 100 grams of, uh, of the main color will be enough. But I'm, I'm trying it out now, I hope so. And we shall see how much uh, how much I will use from both this uh, both this uh, white, the contrasting color, and also the main color lately. But since I'm chain playing it, I will just when the white is uh, done, I will just fill it up with the green. So it will all end up on the same bobbin, and then chain playing it, I can just separate when I come to the white. Yeah, this is lovely. Sit out here. Agnes has fell asleep here on the porch and the birds are just uh, coming and picking on the feeding station there. I have bought sunflower seeds, you call it that, solrosfrön in Swedish. And uh, also a mix, speci especially for robins, because they don't have this, uh, they can't really eat these sunflower seeds. So they, they need the crossed uh, food. <laughs> so I have got crossed, smashed, mashed, crossed. I'm not sure. It's, it's in small, small pieces. And uh, Robin also loves breads and biscuits and uh, things like that. So the, the table is filled and we shall see who will come to visit today. Agnes is uh, watching, so <laughs> oh, I hope they will be brave enough to come and have a look.
my wheel is uh, squeaking a little bit here but I hope that you can that you can bear with it when you sit uh, and spin on your wheel like this and uh, the wheel is making squeaks or noises like this it you almost come into a uh, a rhythm with this sound and the treadle and uh, just the mo moving your hands with the fibers and it becomes like a like a rhythm that you can do so usually I sit and listen to a audiobook while I am uh, spinning but I'm also practicing doing one thing at a time, even though it's just watching a podcast or listening to an audiobook. It's nice just to sit out here and uh, watch the nature, watch the leaves in the wind and uh, the birds coming and going and uh, yeah, just noticing the things I have around me instead of uh, looking at the screen. So that's a practice because we are very used to getting the stimul stimulation, the stimulating from both uh, listening to things on our iPhones or medias or uh, watching something, the films or the podcasts or we, we are having a lot of screen time actually. So uh, it, it's a good thing to practice, not to, to have it. Just relax and... Uh, Watch nature, what it has to offer. And I put up a picture on Instagram uh, the other day and my grapevine, if you remember, if you have been following my podcast, I have had my grapevine in my greenhouse for many, many years. And it, it is uh, getting quite messy in the greenhouse. The leaves and the grapes are uh, falling and it's uh, grapes all over. And it's also something sugary and uh, uh, very sticky, clibby, <laughs> it gets messy in the greenhouse. So last autumn I decided that uh, I will cut it all down and clean out my greenhouse and uh, we shall see. If it survives I will uh, lead it outdoors and if it doesn't I, I was really <laughs> I was really finished with my grape wine so if it wouldn't uh, last I was yeah, I was quite happy with that as well. I came to that decision that if it lives, it lives. If it doesn't, I can just live with that. But this spring it uh, actually came back. So in the, I cut it down really hard. I think I left like 10 centimeters or so on, on the bottom of that uh, grapevine. And uh, uh, this spring it started to come with uh, new fresh branches coming out and we made a hole in in the greenhouse and I was leading out those uh, wi grapes, wines, wines, <laughs> grape wines, I think the wines perhaps you're calling it um, and I put up uh, metallic wires on the outside of the greenhouse and uh, yeah, the leaves are just fantastic now. They are in red and green and yellow and uh, the shiftings on those leaves and they are making the most fantastic patterns. <laughs> so someone commented on the, on the picture that uh, it would make a nice uh, new pattern for, for something, a knitting pattern, inspiration. And yeah, nature is nature is so inspiring right now with all the color combinations and we can go out with our cameras or perhaps just go out and uh, and just suck it all in, remember it in in our feelings with all this beauty that we have. It's a short while now and then uh, the, all the leaves will fall and we are uh, yeah, going into to the darker times. It's still dark but when, when the daylight comes and we can see all the fabulous colors in the nature we, we sort of forget that uh, it will be dark early in the evenings. Yeah. 
working all weekend. I haven't really done anything but uh, working, eating and sleeping and relaxing. But I have been doing some knitting uh, in the evenings and I will show you that in, in the next podcast, the real podcast, because this will be only only a spinning podcast but I have casted on some new things and uh, yeah exciting also actually casting on and finishing things small things that I have been knitting like this um, sandcast scarf that I was uh, showing you in the previous podcast was also small things that I find uh, really relaxing to cast on and cast off in in the same day actually so the things that I have been uh, knitting now are also sort of small accessories that will go well with uh, the garments that I have. So that's how I have been planning and also uh, thinking about uh, my favorite uh, things that I already have and uh, actually made uh, different colors in, in my favorite things. So that has been really fun as well. And that inspired me to cast on for a new thing, a new sweater as well. And I have been knitting on my things that I have on the needles. But yeah, in the evenings there has been so satisfying just to make small things and relaxing things. And not really gotten out to sit here and do some spinning. I have been too tired. This uh, shawl, Sandkos scarf, is uh, also translated now into English. So for those of you who were interested in, in this pattern, it's now available in English as well. And I know that it was for free in September and I hope that you managed to download the pattern perhaps uh, if you were interested to, to try to knit it in September, but she's only taking a small symbolic uh, amount of uh, money for, for the pattern. It's an easy pattern, it's, uh, it's not very complicated, comes in one size, and but yeah, it was really nice of her to translate it into English as well. And I know one of you asked if perhaps uh, it was able to uh, to Google Translate it. And did you do that? And did it work for you? That would be interesting to hear. And yeah, the Sandco scarf. And I also am wearing uh, Winterberry West by uh, Emily Foden. And this is a, a pattern from her book, Knits About Winter, I think it's called. And it's a beautiful book and it came out many, many years ago. Not many, many, but perhaps four years ago. <laughs> and I bought it and uh, I knitted uh, this, this vest when, when I bought the book. And it's knitted in uh, the, the yellow or this, uh, this uh, brown yellow color is tuko wool. And the gray bubbles here that we are supposed to make one contrasting bubble here and there and we can decide where to put it ourselves. Uh, I used hand spun yarn for it because I thought it was uh, matching up really well and I wanted to put in some of my hand spun in this vest. And yeah, wearing it today over a, a black dress and with this black scarf is keeping me warm enough. I brought out some wrist warmers here, just a, a simple pair of, uh, with no, no thumb, but something that I can put on my hands if I will be cold, but I'm sure I won't because it's, it's just fresh, fresh and nice in the air today, really nice.
Can you hear the rhythm of the of the wheel? Perhaps you are you want everything to be super quiet, but I, I am actually just feeling the rhythm of the wheel and enjoying it. It's it's quite okay that it's making some small sounds here. It can do so. So I think I will just uh, put on a little clip of music here and film uh, perhaps uh, some different kinds of angles here for the spinning and uh, try to film some birds and the dogs perhaps and I will see you again. I have a lot of spinning to do now with all this white and contrasting uh, with the contrasting color and also 100 grams of this but perhaps I will pop in when the white is uh, spun and I can uh, show you when I'm just attaching making the braid opening up the braid and attaching uh, attaching the new color to this white so I will see you really soon again listen to some music enjoy some uh, views here. I was walking the dogs before and filmed a little bit from the cows so that will also be something in this clip. Really nice. I was <laughs> When I was working uh, yesterday I came home around 10 in the evening and the moon was full and it was just so bright. It was like someone had a big, uh, a big lamp on outside and I had really really hard a really hard time to sleep. I'm sorry, it's the birds. <laughs> uh, I had really hard time to sleep this this night because of this full moon. But when I when I drove up towards our house, uh, in just beside the house, we have these uh, fields, and now the the cow farmer <laughs> has his cows walking just beside our yard. And it was a big, big white bull. You call it bull? It's the male cow. <laughs> a really big one. And he was just uh, laying there in the corner and sleeping. And I tried to take a photo, but it was it was too dark. Uh, I looked at the photos because I thought perhaps the the lightning would uh, show show the cow on the picture, but it didn't. So. We shall see, perhaps I can film him during the day if he shows up here, but it was the full moon and this big white bull laying there really close to our house. Was It was quite magical when I came home, so I, saw, I stayed out and I took pictures of the moon and also tried to film the cows. <laughs> yeah, it was nice. And also we have had frost now for a couple of nights. It has been minus, minus degrees. So the winter is coming closer, but in the daytime it's so beautiful. But no more chatting now. Let's just uh, enjoy some music and some nature.
So the weight is uh, finished. 20 grams of uh, white uh, contrasting color has been spun. Time to to start uh, opening up this braid. And if it's if it's nicely crocheted, you can say it will be easy to open it up like this. Sometimes uh, uh, they don't uh, go as as easily as this one. <coughs> Oi, Nemo, come, come, Nemo, come. Nemo is impatient. He doesn't like this. Come, hey. Mm. Can you not go out? He wants to go inside, but he, he is an <laughs> outdoor dog. He doesn't know that, but he is a, a wolf <laughs> from the beginning, and he thinks he is some kind of indoors um, little pet. But as you can see here, I am just uh, easily separating in two pieces like this. And I'm not quite sure if I will, since I am chain plying it, it doesn't matter on how I prepare the fibers actually. But I just wanted some shorter color shiftings. So I will split it in four. Every half goes in half again if I can if it doesn't break, just to get uh, the color shiftings uh, more uh, shorter. If I would have spun it right from the beginning from the braid and not uh, splitting it in any halves, it would have been long color, long color combinations, but uh, striped. <laughs> this will be shorter stripes this way. So this has been separated twice now and I will just uh, keep it like this and uh, I can keep that on a hold and uh, rolling this one up and putting it in my knee. And I will just uh, attach it to the white here. And I will just take take a little. I have kept a little bit of fluff here, and I will put the fluff together with uh, the green here. So in this draw drafting there, there will be like couple of centimeters where there is green and white blending but uh, I can just take that away if it bothers me. So now, now I have 100 grams of the green to spin. Thank you. 
quite a bit windy outside and uh, it doesn't bother me but I'm when I'm talking the wind is going uh, in into the camera so it will be noisy for you so I decided to move into the greenhouse and do the plying uh, I made a decision as I was spinning and I did separate uh, First I did spin the 20 grams of the white fibers and then I splitted uh, this, uh, it wasn't a, a braid, it was sort of a just combed top or what to say. Uh, I splitted it in half lengthwise and this is the half, so this is 50 grams that I spread out like this just to see all the beautiful shades. And uh, the, the other 50 grams I have been spinning up now. So I, just as I was spinning, I was thinking that perhaps it's a good thing to, to split the 50 grams in two. So I know that these are the 50 grams that I can use for one sock. And uh, this will be the 50 grams to use for the other sock. So that I won't uh, use too much for one sock and end up with two less yarn in the end but it's time it's time for plying and I wanted to show you something on my Maya craft that I saw saw on Instagram a while back and it was how to to remove I will I will shift the camera a bit so I have now angled you down so you can see uh, Maya craft is uh, the wing here is uh, attached to this uh, to the wheel by uh, a screw <laughs> do you call it that i'm not even sure if you call it a screw but it's a it's a spiral metallic thing in here and you just wind it on that but when you want to take it on or off there is first a little snap you have to do to to make it loose and then you can hold your hand here so this one is loose and if you want to attach it again you just put it towards the this is how it looks you have a metallic uh, a metallic screw here with uh, some kind of uh, thing to <laughs> <laughs> yeah, my English is perfect to expl explain, but uh, yeah, if you don't treadle, you do. You just uh, do like this, and if you if you can treadle, I will just remove it like this. So when you want to, I I will uh, take away my. 50 grams of uh, green and 20 grams of white is the white is the first and then the green so I will put it on uh, this lazy cake here and I will put on a new a new bobbin here <coughs> on it's it's the backwards <laughs> so here we are it's attached and then we oft after the nice when you when you treadle uh, you just have to do a little click to make it stay in place now we're going to chain ply uh, this uh, left here since since the last time I applied something so I will just remove and it's important to start with a loop when you are chain plying so let's find the end the tricky part is to settle in in a nice way and to get started because uh, once you get started you will get the hang of it but uh, it, it's a bit tricky in the beginning so I will just uh, fix my wheel here so it stands okay I think it's a little bit 
uh, uneven here.
chain playing is done and I had a little trouble getting started. I think it's because we do it so so seldom so we I don't have a, a good routine to get started but once I got started it it turned out well and uh, the white that I started to spin is the one that got chain plied in the end so there is 20 grams of the white and there is 50 grams of the green here on this bobbin so what I have to do now is to uh, spin this lovely green cake uh, and do the same with chain playing and everything and then separate the white there for uh, two equal uh, sized skeins and then I will have uh, the same amount for, for, the, for the separate sock. So I, I hope that this will be a success. And I think, not fingering but perhaps, but uh, a little bit, uh, yeah, sport, between fingering and sport. I will, I will uh, take the measurements when I uh, unwind it to the Nidi Nodi and it will be nice to see. I tried to spin uh, thinner. I don't want to spin super, super thin, but I want to, wanted to try to get some something like fingering for this sock. So I hope that uh, you enjoyed this bit so far and we will see if I will fill it up with some more materials or if I will just update you in, in podcast to come. So if you want to support my work with this channel, I will put a link under here to coffee.com and to Patreon. And I will see you again really soon in a real podcast. Bye bye!